So, we're about to design the 5 volt power supply for the Z80 homebrew computer project. Um, and the thing is, I wanted to use this very nice 70s era 7805 in a nice tier 3 package. And I thought, this is surely going to. Um, supply at least two amps continuous. Um, because I read that on the internet, um, people on eBay sell those as two amp regulators. Um, I didn't buy them from those people, but uh, I thought, yeah, okay, the data sheet said 500 milliamps continuous. And interestingly enough, both of those are wrong. Um, this will supply one and a half amps continuous just like a regular 7805 but it has an interesting quirk and I'm going to demonstrate that here shortly so negative pin on this is where the collector would be on the transistor and then if I remember correctly the emitter is the output, this just goes to an ammeter and the base is the input and we're going to set this to voltage here for the moment and then we're going to apply power and this is 12 volts and yeah it's perfectly happy it doesn't have its capacitors and it doesn't have a load on it so it's a bit, but it puts out 5 volts but now look if I put it into AM mode, it will supply 200 milliamps. And it will actually go down a little as it heats up. But if I now reduce the voltage to about 10, 9 to 10 volts, you can see this suddenly climbs up and bam, at 9 volts it's now at one and a half amps and as it heats up it drops down so that's alright so it apparently has some sort of mechanism in it I should actually look at the equivalent circuit I could probably make it out that if the voltage, if the input voltage is above 12 volts uh, above 10 volts it will just go down to this mode where it just puts out 200 milliamps which is um, makes it somewhat unusable for what I'm planning to do where the input voltage might be above um, 10 volts initially and under load it would drop down to about 8 or 7 because this transformer over here is rated for 8 volts but the thing is if it initially only allows us to draw 200 milliamps before it drops then uh, we get all sorts of issues with the computer um, and also the voltage doesn't drop so it never goes out to 200 milliamp it will yeah it will cause all sorts of issues but now for the interesting bit I have um, just a generic eBay Shenzhen market uh, sourced 7805 here and if I connect this up and obviously it's mounted on a heatsink here um, that I put on there just to um, test how long it actually will supply 1.5 amps so about the same voltage um, without the capacitor and uh, um, and some sort of current draw it will regulate too low it's a thing they do but if we crank this to amps and then just let it go well initially it will go up to 2 amps it will sit there quite happily doing 1.9 amps and as it heats up or as the heat sink heats up really this will now slowly drop so I reckon 
this chip would actually do better than the huge Tesla 7805 here. Which is a shame, I really wanted to use this. Um, but apparently not. Oh, this is... it's In the previous tests, I had it set for 12 volts. And so it heated up way faster because um, it was dissipating almost 20 watts here. So yeah, now we can see it dropping very quickly. But under realistic conditions, let's say it's 10 volts. This will go at 1.5 amps forever. Well, the heatsink will be a bit more efficient. This is just a slab of aluminium with two holes in it that I use to test components. But yeah, so apparently the modern China regulator wins. It's annoying. I have tons of those Tesla 7805s. What am I supposed to do with those? Well, they might be nice as a post regulator um, when you know that your supply isn't going to exceed 10 volts. Yeah, this is quite happily running at 1.5 amps. 1.8 actually. So yeah, I think we're going to base it around this sort of regulator. For the power supply I came up with the following arrangement. Um, I'll start from the left where the main mains comes in. I've got a fuse here that's dimensioned in a way um, that it's only going to blow if this primary side here on the transformer shorts out or, or does something uh, similar to shorting out uh, going to very low resistance then this will also blow uh, which is going to protect the house from burning down and then we've got a secondary side of the transformer which goes through a fuse that is rated uh, for at the moment for about an amp because I don't uh, expect to go over an amp, but I uh, everything here is designed to um, withstand at least one and a half amps. Um, this will supply one and a half amps, so I might put in a one and a half amp fuse later. Then it goes through a bridge rectifier, standard arrangement, goes through a filter cap, and now goes through if over five volts. Well, over 5 volts plus um, the 2.6 for the green diode. It's about 8 volts. Um, goes through here, lights up this green LED, so you see. Um, this is on and everything here on, on this side is working fine. Then it goes into a 7805, which is a 5 volt regulator. Uh, it's mounted on a heatsink. And this will regulate it down to 5 volts. Uh, this can put out, out about one and a half amps and this red light emitting diode here does also have a 5 volt Zener diode in front of it so if this red diode goes on uh, lights up I mean um, we've got a fault condition because this is definitely over 5 volts here and this should never be over 5 volts so we can actually see on our power supply that something in this regulator has failed and it's now just passing voltage straight through. Um, and this is going to go to the to the back plane connector. So what I plan on, I want to have sort of over voltage protection on every card that you plug into the computer. So um, or maybe I'll just have it on the backplane board, I'm not sure about this, but I just want the power supply to, uh, without doing anything, just tell me there's a fault condition here. Um, yeah, also, long before this goes into current regulation, this fuse will actually blow. Um, and this is a very fast, like a semiconductor type fuse, and uh, the hope here is if something down the line shorts out. This will blow out before any of the transistors blow out. So, 
Um, that's just the overall power supply design. Very easy, but has two indicators that show you what's going on. This is the power supply that I just sketched out. Um, has a fuse holder here, 7805 on a heatsink here, two capacitors, bridge rectifier, two Zener diodes, and two resistors, and two LEDs here. Um, but when I was testing this, and you can actually see that something happened down here, um, just, I'll bring this up to the camera. Right here, um, you can see some scorching. When I was testing this, and the circuit is perfectly fine, by the way, uh, when I was testing this, I realized after touching the output of the 555 that the transformer that I had planned on using, that you saw in the last video, uh, was actually not a, an isolation transformer. It was an auto transformer. Uh, I neglected to measure that. It was an unknown transformer. Um, I got out of a junk box and I tried hooking it up to there. And when I touched this point up here um, with my grounded soldering iron tip while the circuit was on, uh, it absolutely blew up and I took out the 7805 um, actually it first took out the fuse um, and then I hooked it up a second time um, and it was still working fine and the second time I touched it with my soldering iron the same thing happened again um, and at first I couldn't I couldn't make uh, sense out of that uh, at first I thought I had just shorted out those two points and I thought, uh, wow, that is, that is a lot of sparks for just a 5 volt rail shorting out. Um, couldn't believe that. So I replaced the fuse and I did the same thing again and this time I took out a fuse and a 7805 and then it dawned on me and I, uh, I uh, got out of my multimeter and I checked the transformer and yeah, it's an auto transformer. So um, I have to replace the transformer in this with, I think I'm going to use something uh, like this. This is another transformer I got of the same junk box, but this time I checked this. Uh, no uh, continuity between either of those and uh, and these these uh, secondary terminals here, so I'm probably going to connect this up to the zero volt and five volt rails here. These are all this is these are all taps, and I think this was some sort of laboratory type transformer, maybe. Um, not sure. Could have also been for a doorbell. But, yeah, this fits on there just as well. And the hood on the transformer. Oops. Added the transformer hood that I designed just fits this just as well. Um, there's the cables that I disordered from the other transformer. It still has the fuse on it. Although this used to be in a bit of heat shrink. So I'm going to mount a new transformer to um, this piece of wood here that I already had put in the holes for the other transformer. It's a bit annoying, but yeah. Um, I think this probably has a, a little less grunt than the other one. It's just physically a little smaller. Um, but it will be perfectly able to supply an amp at, at 5 volts. So. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm going with this.